Hi everyone, this is Madhumita of Science Department. In our previous video, we have discussed about the many kind of life processes which has occurred in plants, isn't it? The same way, today's class also, we are going to discuss about a kind of life process that is called as respiration. So, before getting to the topic, first we should know what is called respiration. Respiration is nothing but gaseous exchange. This gaseous exchange which happens from the atmosphere to the plant. So that is called as gaseous exchange and the process is called as respiration. Okay, while respiration happens, actually what happens in the plant body? What are the changes has happened in the plant body? What actually occurs in the plant body? That's what we are going to discuss in this class. Okay. Now, before that, do plants respire? Do plants respire? We know that during respiration, oxygen will be taken in and the carbon dioxide will be eliminated out. Okay. Now, we know that, uh, we, we used to say that plants give oxygen and it takes in carbon dioxide. Then how come we are telling that uh, plants do respire? How? Yes, of course. The process previously I have told that is called as photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide and it eliminate out oxygen. So, we continuously used to mention that as plants are giving oxygen. We never ever mentioned that it takes in oxygen, isn't it? Why is that so? Because the amount of oxygen it is using, it is very, very negligible amount uh, when you compare to the amount of oxygen it releases out. Okay, so that's why we have never mentioned that. Okay, so plants also respire. Not only animals, plants also take in oxygen. It utilizes oxygen and it releases carbon dioxide out. Okay, now... Why respiration? Why do plants need to respire? So we know that photosynthesis as a result of photosynthesis organism which means plants produces glucose, nutrients. Okay. So why? What is the purpose of producing nutrients? To utilize the nutrients for various bodily functions. Okay. How this plants, these plants utilize this nutrients and it convert that into energy only through the respiration. Okay, so that's why the plants are respiring. During respiration actually, it takes in oxygen and this oxygen, it reacts with nutrients, which means glucose and it releases energy plus carbon dioxide. So this energy is being utilized by the plant for various bodily functions like uh, transportation, growth, for so many body functions is going on in the plant also. Am I correct? Yes. So for the, those kind of life processes, this energy is being utilized. So that's why plants are respiring. Okay, now we will see what are the, which are the parts involved in the respiration. So, which are the parts involved in respiration? Each and every part of the plant involves. Okay, so for first one, root. We know that atmosphere contains oxygen. Now, the root is present under the soil. How the root receives its oxygen? How come it can respire? Even though it is present under the soil, the roots also can respire. So that's why, see, whenever the farmers are uh, planting any uh, seed or sowing any seed, they used to prepare the soil first of all. Am I correct? Why, why the farmers are preparing soil first? So while they prepare soil, actually they loosen up the soil. So while they loosen up the soil, the gap between the soil particles it increases. When the gap between soil particles increases, the air can go inside the gap. 
the air will fill the gap so the roots it utilizes that oxygen and it can respire so that's why the farmers are preparing soil before they sow seed so next stem even stem also can respire how if you see that stem very closer or uh, in, with the help of microscope you can find very very fine pores on it actually this fine pores are called as lenticels so this lenticel is uh, helping the stem in the gaseous exchange in the respiration then next leaf we know that the leaf contains stomata if you see the under side of leaf you can see very fine pores and this pores is situated by blood cells through the naked eye we cannot see but with the help of microscope we can see this stoma okay while you observe we can see two two different way the same stoma you can see in two different way so the first view it is a closed view when the stoma is closed so here the second view when the stoma is open so why it has happened actually this blood cell is actually a pair of cell two cells together it looks like a, a kidney shape okay so this blood cell it contract and relax by means of that the stoma can open and close okay why why actually it has happened why the why the stoma open which means why the blood cell uh, contract and it let the stoma open the gas which is present in the atmosphere it can enter inside when the stoma has closed when the blood cell got relaxed and it got closed the gaseous exchange between atmosphere and the organism which means plant it will get stopped okay so this is how the gaseous exchange or respiration happens in the leaves with the help of blood cell so this blood cell it is helping in protecting the stoma so this blood cell only decide when the stoma can open and close okay so by all these parts which means the root stem and leaf the plant can respire now we are going to discuss about two different types of respiration so this respiration is of two kinds and that is called as aerobic and anaerobic respiration before that what is this called the cellular respiration because this process has happened inside the cell so that's why we are calling that as cellular respiration so now in the case of aerobic respiration this happens in the presence of oxygen so that's why we are calling that as aerobic respiration so here the glucose it is being reacted with oxygen and it produces energy carbon dioxide and water so why this aerobic respiration the glucose it is being totally utilized and more amount of energy it is being released out so uh, mostly the organism which do this aerobic respiration are called as aerobes next kind of uh, respiration it is called as anaerobic respiration now what is the meaning of that without the presence of oxygen the particular process it will go on so that's why we are calling that as anaerobic respiration how is that possible how without oxygen it can respire because oxygen is very very important to split up the glucose bondage but here there is no oxygen at all without any oxygen how can this glucose it is being split up and energy it is being released that is because of the process called glycolysis 
glycol this is glyco glycose and lysis both are greek words it is it has been derived from greek words the meaning glycos means sugar and lysis means splitting so glucose it is being splitting on its own without any help of oxygen so that's why we are calling that process as glycolysis so why this happens the glucose it won't be it won't be utilized thoroughly not like aerobic respiration here in the case of aerobic respiration the glucose it is being utilized thoroughly and also it is being uh, given out more amount of energy but here it won't be like that so in what kind of organism it can happen and in what kind of situation it will happen for example uh, you have a potted plant you have watered uh, the potted plant a lot so what will happen as a result of that so the pot is thoroughly filled with water in that case the water it just discharges the air out in that case there is no air in the pot at all so in this kind of situation the root which is present under the soil it doesn't have any oxygen it cannot receive any oxygen then how will it respire definitely without any oxygen it has to split up the glucose and it produces energy and that energy alone it has to be used okay so the same way the anaerobic respiration happens in that way as a result of that alcohol it is being utilized so uh, because of that the root it just start to rot so if you do that continuously for uh, four or five days after that the root it just totally rot why because the amount of alcohol it just get increased there so it it just become spoiled the totally the plant will die okay then whichever organism in which other organism this process anaerobic respiration happens a very good example is a kind of fungi called yeast so in yeast this anaerobic respiration happens so here without the help of oxygen the glucose is being splitted energy is being released and this energy is utilized by the organism for various bodily functions and it also releases alcohol and carbon dioxide okay how come we can do that you do one thing uh, you can have uh, some amount of flour like maida wheat whatever it may be okay you just mix that with water and you just stir it very finely then add some yeast powder on it let that set up stir it well and let this sit up as such for uh, some hours uh, nearly one or two two hours okay later after that if you come and watch that set up the amount of dough it is being raised it won't be as the same as before why because Uh, you, you you just stir try to stir that by using a spoon uh, with many water bubbles will uh, sorry many air bubbles will come up and it just burst out do you know what is that that is carbon dioxide and also if you taste that fine very fine uh, so taste you can feel okay that is because of alcohol okay so the yeast is the organism which will do anaerobic respiration as a result of that it releases alcohol and carbon dioxide and this organism is it is being used a lot only because of this process actually this is also called as fermentation and this organism is used in the, in pastry industries uh, for preparing cake uh, bread and so many things even the production of alcohol it is being utilized okay so still now we have discussed about a kind of life process in plant it is respiration okay thank you so much everybody okay.